Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. Today is Tuesday, October the 26th, 2021, Tuesday of the 30th week of the year, the 30th week in ordinary time. Coming to you uh, from uh, what is one of the most wonderful parts of our campus here at St. Francis, uh, this is our St. Francis Garden, uh, which fronts Leesville Road, um, and which is to the other side of the, uh, turn around, uh, go this way, um, which is the other side of the log cabin. And there's the back of the log cabin right over there. Uh, this wonderful uh, little building that we have on our campus uh, that can be used for a lot of things, um, and it's not used for enough things, so hopefully it'll start being used for more things, because uh, it's a wonderful little place. Um, and its centerpiece is this wonderful, beautiful, um, I'm going to turn around this way. Nope, nope, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. I will get this thing right eventually. Uh, this beautiful centerpiece is uh, St. Francis Garden right over here. Um, getting ready for the harvest, getting ready for the harvest. Uh, it uh, it was featured in a most uh, recent, I think in the most recent um, edition of NC Catholic, North Carolina Catholic, um, by the great work that it does in supplying uh, food for um, various uh, agencies and various uh, ki uh, kitchens and shelter uh, uh, pantries and, and things like that throughout the diocese. Um, a long standing tradition here um, at St. Francis um, and a beautiful uh, tribute again to uh, the saint of creation, um, who is at the centerpiece of our campus here at St. Francis. Uh, so uh, coming to you today from the garden because uh, we're gonna look at uh, mustard seeds uh, in, in a bit, but before that, uh, uh, Romans continues today. Uh, Romans continues a little bit better today. Uh, Paul has finally stopped talking about sin um, and now talking about hope, uh, which is which, which is a much better thing to talk about perhaps than sin. Uh, but the way that he talks about hope is not just hopes as something that human beings look forward to or that human beings want to embrace, but hope that all creation embraces. Um, and a hope of expectation, a hope for the fulfillment of promises, a hope for, as Paul says, what is yet unseen, uh, not just a hope for what we think will happen or what we want to happen, but to hope that what does happen uh, will reveal to us more and more the great glory of God. One of the greatest lines in this part of the letter to the Romans is where Paul speaks about all creation groaning to see the fulfillment that God has planned. All of creation groans. Um, in this world in which we live today, there is a lot of groaning of creation, a lot of groaning of creation in need of healing, in need of care, um, in need of protection. Uh, but that groaning also comes with a sense of wanting us as human beings to wake up to what it is uh, that we are supposed to be for this world uh, and do in this world, to be people who care for this world, who make sure that, this, that uh, things in this world know that they have a place, that they have been created by our God uh, to serve a purpose. Um, our responsibility and our job from the beginning of creation um, is to help all of creation uh, to realize those things, not just ourselves, uh, but even the lowly mosquito. Uh, so uh, as creation groans for the fulfillment and it looks expectantly to the fulfillment of God's promises, uh, so are we uh, supposed to join in that chorus, um, asking God to fulfill what God has begun, uh, bringing all things um, into that fullness uh, that, 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 says, that God says awaits us. Um, that fullness begins in simple ways, though. That fullness is already at work in our midst. We have to recognize that, too. Uh, it's the way that God works. And so these two little parables about the mustard seed and the yeast, um, to what is the kingdom of God prepared? Uh, compared. Uh, it's, com it's prepared to, it's compared to uh, this little tiny mustard seed, which when it is planted becomes a very large bush. Not the largest of bushes, but at the time they might have thought it was. Uh, but it still moves from something that is negligible and something that people might pass over and not really think much about into something that is incredible and wonderful. Um, get to be able to have birds nest in its branches uh, from that small tiny seed is a remarkable development uh, that happens. Again, unexpectedly, unlooked for um, and unimagined, and yet still it happens. The same thing is true with yeast, you know, that it is small again, these small little um, uh, yeast um, molecules, whatever they are, uh, go into uh, flour and they leaven the flour and they allow the flour to rise uh, and to become a great loaf of bread that is able to be shared with many people. Um, again, from the smallest of things come the greatest of wonders. Um, we need to recognize that. We need to always realize that because that's how God works within the smallness, within the neglected, within the overlooked, with, within those things that we might just toss to the margins. God is at work revealing wonder and glory in our midst. May we be people who are attuned to that in the same way we can see how seeds grow into wonderful plants in a beautiful garden uh, that we have here at St. Francis. So too does the kingdom of God, the reign of God, grow from the smallest of, uh, of, of embracings, the smallest of yeses, the smallest of uh, transformations in our lives into something that enriches the world and gives it hope and life. And may the Lord give you his peace.